Transcribed. Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the Lawrence and Lee operetta, Annie Laurie, starring Gordon McRae and his guest, lovely Lucille Norman. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Tonight, another memorable play with music is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. Now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, Lucille Norman will be a last named Jean Armour, and I'll be Bobby Burns, the lad who wrote the sweet songs that Scotland and the whole world sings. And here's the story of Annie Laurie. Have you ever been to Scotland, where the heather lies like a purple blanket on the heath, and where the locks are silver teardrops in the valleys, and the mist is like a crown on the Heeland Hills? Or, on a festive day, have you been to the marketplace of a country town, and lads are in their Sunday kilts, and the pipes are playing a tune that no lassie can resist? Aye, that's my Scotland, the Scotland I love. Robin Burns, why are ye not dancing? I can't find me a lassie, Duncan. <laughs> <laughs> That's a rich one. There's no one lass in Ayrshire would not come a-running if you asked her. <laughs> well, what's wrong with the music, Jamie? Well, you know, Robin, every good bagpipe's got the asthma. And you must give her time off for a sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have a hundred pipers for the dancing on my wedding day. Ah, uh, wouldn't that be, Robin? On the day I can afford to pay a hundred pipers. Ha! A day of judgment will come sooner. We are hundred pipers and all, and all. We are hundred pipers and all, and all. We'll up and give them a blow, a blow. We are hundred pipers and all, and all. Oh, it's over the border, oh, it's over the border, oh, oh. We'll on and we'll march to the Carlisle Hall with the Elsitz Castle and all, and all. We are hundred pipers and all, and all. We are hundred pipers and all, and all. We'll up and give them a blow, blow. We are hundred pipers and all, and all. We are hundred pipers. Good day to you, Robin Byrne. Good day to you, Jean Armour. That's a fine, brave song you sing. Aye. I'll be singing it in the New World soon. What? Far away in the Isles of America, Jeannie. And you nor your father will be bothered to listen to my songs. You cannot leave Scotland. You must not heed what my father said. Oh, he's right. I'm near a fit husband for you. I'm a bad farmer who can plow a furrow straight. And a maker of songs that nobody sings but me. You understand, Robin. I cannot be your bride against my father's wish. Yeah. You see me weeping salt tears? If Jean R. Moore will not marry me, there's a bonnier lass who will. She's already promised to me. Another lass? Will she go with you to America? Aye, she'll go with me anywhere I go. Maxwell's grays are bonny.
A last named Annie Laurie. Well, I didn't tell you everything about my life. I cannot believe it, Robin. After all the bonny songs and poems you wrote to me, and the whole time you was promised to another. Now, Jean, Jean Armour, didn't be sad, lass. A few more weeks, and I'll be across the great ocean. I'll no be here to trouble you with my kisses. It was no trouble. It mm. <laughs> was no trouble for me either. Only remember me, Jean Armour, as the liar what took you walking in the twilight and stole a kiss or two from you in the gloaming. Remember? Roaming in the gloaming on the bonny banks of Clyde. When the sun has gone to rest, that's the time that we love best. Oh, it's lovely roaming in the gloaming. One night in the gloaming, we were tripping side by side. He kissed me twice and asked me once if I would be. I so was I We were both the same But I got brave and braver On the journey coming home Roaming in the gloaming On the bonny banks of Clyde Roaming in the gloaming With my lassie by the sun has gone to rest, that's the time that we love best. Oh, it's lovely roaming in the gloaming. Well, it is all past now, Jean. I am bound for the Isles of America, where freedom's more than a word. And all men are brothers, or so I'm told. Will I not see you again, Robin Burns? Scotland will not see me again, Jeannie, when the wind is in the shoulder of Masaya. Farewell, Jean. Farewell. <laughs> What do you want from me, lass? Are ye Mr. Bark? Aye. The man what publishes the book for all the world to read? The same. I have some poems here. Poems? Did you write them? No. They were written to me by a lad named Robert Burns. Burns. I never heard of him. He's but a poor farmer in Ayrshire, about to go away from Scotland to try his luck in the Isles of America. But I cannot bear to see him go. So you came to Edinburgh to ask me to publish his songs. Is that the way of it, lass? It is the way of it. The poems are a penny a peck. If you can give Robin but a few pounds for his verses, I think he might stay in Scotland. It would make a bonny book, Mr. Bark. There's music in the words he writes. Hear how sweetly runs his song. gently sweet. Sleep by thy murmuring stream. 
is a funny ballad, lass. And you sing it as if you love the lad who wrote it. I, I love him. Will you make a book of his poems, Mr. Bark, and send him what money you can, for he needs it sorely. It is a gamble, but if all his poems are the same lilt, I'll risk it. Lord bless you, sir. But give me your promise. What promise, lass? That Robin Burns will never know the name or the lass what brought you the verses. Goodbye, good Jamie. My ship is waiting. I cannot see you go, Robin Burns. My bagpipes will play not but a sad song after you leave the shores of Scotland. Well, Jamie... Each man must travel his own way. And often the paths go wide apart. But there's comfort in the knowing that every road that leads away from Scotland also leads the way back to it again. By young bunny banks and by young bunny banks Where the sun shines bright on Loch Delay me, lads. I'm on my way. Wait, Robin. There's news in the mail from Edinburgh. Not can stay me from my voyage, Duncan. Look. The songs of Robin Burns. My verses. Printed up in a regular book, like a schoolboy speller. Oh, it is a thing of beauty, Robin. Makes me most wish I knew how to read. Uh, oh. What's that? Uh, the green slip of paper. Why... It's a bank draft for 20 pounds. Robin Burns, you're a wealthy man. <laughs> Nay, Duncan, but to pay my debts, almost. But where did they find my verses? Oh, no miracle that. Every lad in Lass and Ayrshire knows your songs. The letter. What's in the letter, Robin? Aye, it is from the man who made the book. Aye? He wants me to come to Edinburgh. He says the city's agog with my poems. I'm a famous man, he says. You cannot leave Scotland now, Robin. Nay, you must not run off to the Isles of America now. You're right, Jamie. I'll no leave Scotland. I'll take the hero to Edinburgh. <laughs> Second act of Annie Laurie in just a moment. Quick, men, over here with the hose. Those buildings are already gone. Let's try and stop the fire here. Hurry! Hey, what's happened to the water? It stopped. Well, the wells are dry. The water is gone. The whole business district's gone for sure, then. Can't stop this fire now. Wait a minute. There's a freight coming. Maybe we can stop it. And stop it they did, and just in time, too. For three buildings in that small Midwestern community had already been destroyed by a fire raging out of control. The whole business district was threatened. 
Yet in a matter of minutes, the station agent stopped the fast freight train, and more than 15,000 gallons of water from the locomotive tender were poured on the blaze, and the fire was stopped, thanks to the local station agent and the train he flagged down. In similar emergencies in many parts of the country, the railroads have pitched in to help the neighbors along their right of way, fight fires, and maintain vital water, heat, and power supply. In an eastern city, for instance, when a factory boiler broke down and stopped production, a locomotive was switched into power and heat the plant. In another city, when local power failed, a locomotive was rushed in to keep a hospital's essential services in operation. When the water supply failed in still another city, a locomotive was put to work, keeping the water pumps going until repairs could be made. Yes, in time of emergency, whether it be local power failure or national disaster, the railroads have proved themselves to be helpful neighbors as well as essential carriers of all the things we need and use every day. Now, here is the second act of the Lawrence and Lee operetta, Annie Laurie, starring Gordon McRae as Robert Burns and Lucille Norman as Jean Armour, with Katie Lee as Katie Barr. I couldn't have believed it. The poems of an airship plowman swept through Scotland like a blaze. In Edinburgh, it seemed everyone wanted to meet me and to shake my hand. I, poor Rhymer Robin, even dinnered with your lord. Do you think it turned my head? I might, perhaps. But I, I never forgot the lass who owned my heart. And for How's that, lass? I know you're Annie Laurie. You do? Who is she, then? My father knows her, too. It was my father who published your poems. Aye. And if you'll forgive a plain girl for speaking her mind, I fell in love with the first line I read of your book. Oh, well, thank you, thank you, lass. Could your Annie Laurie be like this melody, good Robin Burns? If I had a ribbon bow to bind my hair if I had a fancy sash, me ain't true love, he'd treat me fair. Then he would go to Ayrshire, a login on the right. He'd bring me back with his two hands, a very fancy prize. If I was like the city born, all fair and smart, there's not a lad in all these parts who know my heart. Then I would go to Ayrshire, where all the law and go. I'd knock about in settlements, a wearing fur and clothes. If I had a ribbon bow to bind my hair, if I had a fancy sash, me ain't true love, then he'd treat me fair. My red heels would go a clashing. Where'er my fancy should, my love would see and wish that he had taken me when he could. If I just had a ribbon bow for to bind my hair. 
you don't need a ribbon bow to find your own true love. But if my love is a poet... A poet? Ah, poets are a faithless lot. He not to do with poets. You're faithful to your Annie Laurie. Aye, but that's different. You think you know my Annie Laurie? She came to my father's house late of the night with a satchel full of poems. With poems, you say? It was she who begged my father to make them in a book. And what did she look like, Katie Bark? Oh, I didn't see her, Robin. But she had a voice like a thrush in the spring. It was she who brought my poems. Aye, it was your Annie Laurie. I didn't trust the truth in that, Kate. But I must leave the city now. I must go back to Ayrshire. Why, Robin? I didn't like riddles, lass. And I mean to hear the answer. Duncan, me lad. Welcome home, Bobby Burns. How you seen Jean Armour here about, Duncan? Jean Armour? Ah, uh, she wilted like a flower, Robin, since she went away. Nay, nah, he no see her. Jamie, lad. Jamie, lad, put down your pipes and tell me if, if you've seen my Jean Armour. Ah, nay, Robin. She's a stranger to the town since you went away from Ayrshire. She's not been the same. But I hear she wanders by the banks of the River Rye all alone, morning and evening. The bank of the river. Uh, it's there I'll look for her, Jamie. Tell me, Jean Armour, who was that took my poems to the publisher? I did not ken. It was a lass who came by stealth at night. By stealth, you say? Aye, and who sang like the thrush in springtime. It was you, Jean Armour. No. It was. It was you, Jean, who turned the tide of my life. Not I. Who made a book of my songs and saved me from leaving my native hills. It was you, Jean. And if it were me, Rhyme Robin, what matters it now? Your heart is promised to another. Never. To Annie Laurie. Oh, oh, Jeannie. Did you never guess? There is no Annie Laurie. She's no one and everyone. The dream of perfection in every laddie's eye is Annie Laurie. And every lass will make a lad to count her kisses more than her wealth. Her name is Annie Laurie, too. And if your father will pay a poet for a son, I'll kiss my Annie Laurie. And her name is Gina Moore. Oh, Robin. just a moment. And our thanks to Katie Lee, who played Katie Bark, and to her Butterfield, Tom McKee, Jonathan Hole, and our entire company. Annie Laurie is a fictional version of the life and songs of Bobby Burns and was written by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at the same time by the American Railroads. Marvin? Perhaps you'd never thought about it this way, but railroads have long stood as a symbol of one of our basic freedoms. Freedom to go where we want when we want to. But there is an equally important freedom symbolized by the American newspaper, the freedom to know. These freedoms, the freedom to go and the freedom to know, 
have contributed jointly toward preserving the vitality of the American way of life. That's why the railroads are glad to take this opportunity to salute the American newspaper and the newspaper man for their unending struggle to preserve freedom of the press and the other freedoms we all hold so dear. Thank you, Marvin. Well, Gordon, we really took the grand tour to Scotland, didn't we? <laughs> Aye, it is a great day for the Clan Macrae, Lucille. <laughs> you took the high notes and I took the low notes. But uh, you hit the high seas before me. <laughs> <laughs> well, where's the show train stopping next Monday night, Gordon? Well, we're bound for Broadway again, Lucille, with the great Sigmund Romberg musical treat, Maytime. And we're mighty proud to welcome back to the show train that great star of the Metropolitan Opera, Miss Dorothy Kirsten. I promise you I won't miss next week's show. Good night, Gordon. Good night, Lucy. And we'll be expecting you back for another visit very, very soon. All aboard! Well, friends, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next week in Sigmund Romberg's Maytime, this is Gordon McRae saying good night. <laughs> Gordon McRae appeared through the courtesy of Warner Brothers, producers of Our Lady of Fatima. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff. Our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroads. Now stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. Transcribed the